Okay, so last week we, we discussed high pass texturing on everyday HDR and today I'm going to go into a little bit more about post processing and uh, the use of high pass texturing with a couple other techniques to make an image look a little bit older than it should be. So this is an image I took in uh, Moss Landing in California and it's a pretty interesting place because you're on the beach and then you see this these giant power plant looking structures in the background. It's something eerie from a video game or something. But after taking the picture and HDRing it, it to me it didn't look very good. Uh, but it had potential to be something. So I'm going to show you a couple little techniques on how to make an image like this better. In my opinion, better. You can make your own judgment after you see it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull in uh, the, the backgrounds the textures that I'm going to use to put over top of it. And it's going to be my favorite image to pull in as a texture. This is a, an old metal bookshelf that's at work that's been sitting outside and has been scraped on and has been rusting away and there's bird poop on it and there's all kinds of character to it. But I'm not going to get rid of the bird poop because it does some pretty cool things when you use it as a texture. I know, pretty gross, huh? Alright, so this is going to get pulled to the size and then I'm going to go ahead and press overlay to get my texture look going and you see how uh, the the rust is really coming through there I don't really like how that looks I want to give it more of a, uh, a cracked picture look not uh, not red streaks so to do that I, I, I always play and one of the things I found is that if I invert this image I press control I or command I I get a nice uh, bluish texture there so now I'm going to duplicate this layer and do the high pass texturing we, we discussed uh, last week. Uh, so then go up to filter, other, high pass, and take this pretty high up there. Get, get, some, get some good texture in there. So that now we have that nice texture there. I'm going to go ahead and dock this overlay opacity down to probably about mm, let's go with 25 percent that looks pretty good to me so now we've got this image that looks pretty old but it's still not quite where I want it to be so what I've done is I've created an action um, which I've showed actions before I'll go I'll cite my source for that on on the web page uh, for the previous tutorial on making actions. I made an action called old Polaroid. I want this image to look like an old Polaroid. You know, the washed out look where the uh, the yellows are over exaggerated, the blues are pushed away. So when I press play, I get that. Now, to do that, you see I have two layers here. One's a hue saturation layer and one's a color balance layer. So if you haven't made an action that's fine you can follow along with me and I'll show you exactly how I got there so for now what I'm going to do is just close these down make it so that they don't they aren't doing anything to the image and I'm going to open up a color balance uh, layer so when I go to color balance what I did was I just I just play with the slider bars I, I put yellow in I pulled yellow out uh, put yellow in pulled yellow out and you do that for the hi highlights the midtones and the shadows and to get the exact readings of what, what I have here, I'll just go ahead and turn this on so we can see. So I've yellowed about negative uh, 75 on the midtones, green plus 36, red plus 100. Uh, go to highlights, uh, pretty much took all the red out and put in a lot of cyan. I took all the green out, put in a lot of magenta, and then put a lot more yellow in than blue. Go to shadows, and hun uh, added 100 to everything and you can play with the slider bars to see. I mean that's not going to be the tried and true method because every picture is different. So if I run that action on another image I'm going to have to play with it a little bit but at least I know that to get the old Polaroid look I'm going to have to play with the color balance. So the next thing I did was pull in uh, a hue saturation adjustment and you can get there just by going to hue saturation and what I was really looking to do was pull the more yellow out of this image. The yellows are a lot, way too vibrant. So to do that, if I just, if I wanted to pull the saturation out of the yellow, and I, I go to the hue saturation, and I put the saturation all the way down, 
I get a sepia toned image. And I'm not really looking for a sepia toned image. I'm looking to just take the yellow out of the image. So what I want to do is I want to go to uh, the, the drop down box where it says master and go to yellow and start pulling that yellow out. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I did with my layer and we'll go to yellows and we'll see yep I went negative 100 on the on the yellows and that's pretty much how I get that old school Polaroid look and I've taken a, uh, a what to me was a bad image and made it made it much better in my opinion there's the original and here's all the work we've done to get it to look like an old Polaroid and get that rustic nasty looking field now what I'm working on, I still haven't quite finished it yet, but I am working on making a, a, a template for a Polaroid so that all you have to do is do this to your image and then uh, pull it right into the Polaroid uh, template that I'm working on. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. This is the Polaroid template I'm working on. Uh, as you can see, it's just basically a, a stamped layer of what I've been working on. I'll get to the uh, finished image later and I'll, I'll post it so you guys can all use it. Uh, so what I've done is uh, used a checkerboard background to get the, the glue effect of the Polaroid that happens in the, when you pull your Polaroid out of the, the old Polaroid cameras. And then just added a stroke path to the image around it after cropping it. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you can make uh, take a, a seemingly crappy image and make it look pretty good. So, alright. Have a happy St. Paddy's Day or... Happy St. Patty's Day hangover, and uh, do some HDR on this weekend.